Welcome back. This is lesson 20.5. In this lesson, we'll write a computer program to carry out the insertion sort. First, we'll write the insertion sort in Python. Then we'll look at possible ways to improve the insertion sort and explore some variations on the insertion sort program. First of all, we'll write the insertion sort in Python. Here's a reminder of how the insertion sort works. A marker passes down the list just once. Unlike the uh, bubble sort, the marker passes once from zero to the end of the list. The value at the marker plus one is compared to the marker. And then it is passed backwards not just once, but as many times as it takes until it reaches a value that is smaller than itself. And at that point, the backwards loop stops. So let's write a program to do that. I suggest that you follow along with me. If you like, you can stop the video before I show you the code and try and write it yourself. Otherwise, stop it after you see the code and then you can copy. OK, so first of all, we're going to make a marker go forward through the list. So how would you do that? We'd use a for loop. Um, here I've called the counter marker. That's because we're going to have two loops. So I'm going to call the forward loop counter the marker. <coughs> So for marker in range, starting at zero to the length to the stop at the length of the array minus one. That's because we're always going to compare the value at the marker to the value that follows. So if we go to the very end of the list, there won't be a value that follows and our program will crash. OK, so make sure you've got that code. Now we need to write a second line of code, which will count backwards from the value one ahead of the marker backwards to zero. So we've got, we've got a backwards loop. Let's look at what that looks like. So we've got the marker going forwards to the length of the array minus one. And we've got a second count, which I've called I which starts at marker plus one. It's, it's the value one ahead of the marker and goes all the way back to zero in steps of minus one. So it's a backwards loop. Now to complete the insertion sort, we have to swap the values back at, in the backwards loop. So inside the backwards loop, we check the value against the value before it in the list. And if they're the wrong way round, we swap them. So see if you can write that without show, uh, seeing the code. I'm going to show you the code in a second or two. So <clears throat> this goes inside the second loop. If the value at, at the counter is smaller than the value before it, then swap them. So we're swapping backwards, comparing each value with the value before it. OK, that's it. If you've done those four lines of code, you've created a program that does the insertion sort. There's the whole thing. So the marker is counting forwards to one before the end of the array. A second marker is counting backwards from that back to zero. And inside the second loop, we're comparing the value with the value before it. And if they're the wrong way around, we're swapping them. And that's the insertion sort. The only other line you'd have to write would be at the start, either to um, create or input the list that you want to sort. So if you haven't done that already, uh, this is the next task. Write the program that I've just described and 
when you've got that working, try to turn it into an insertion sort procedure or function. We talked um, last couple of lessons ago about the difference between sort procedures and sort functions. So have a go at making it into a procedure or function. Uh, the lesson will continue, so pause, do this task, and then we come back to the lesson. So uh, if you've got that working, i am just very quickly show you a, an extremely easy way to improve the insertion sort and make it go faster. So here's an easy way to improve the time it takes to complete the insertion sort. Put in a simple break command. This will break out of the backwards for loop as soon as the value reaches its final position. So when there are no more swaps, when the value is no longer smaller than the values before it in, in the list, then there's no more swapping to happen and we might as well break out of the for loop. And this will make all the backwards for loops much faster and speed up the entire insertion sort program. I don't usually like to use the break command, but here it has such a big advantage, it's definitely worth it. Uh, okay, so that's the insertion sort in Python. Now let's look at some variations which may apply in Python or in other programming languages. The variations I'm just going to quickly look at is the difference between a sort procedure and a sort function. The impact of using different ways to swap values and the use of iteration or recursion and uh, within iteration, the use of a for loop or a while loop. So the, this is I'll quickly go through these different variations and I urge you to try out at least some of these in your own programming. So here's the sort insertion sort as a procedure. You've already seen this. I've made one change. I've changed the two uh, counter variables into I and J. You'll see that quite often in uh, other people's programs. So I wanted you to be used to it. As you can see, the list is passed as a parameter to the procedure but there is no return command so the original list is changed by the procedure and this can happen in python because of the way that lists are passed um, as objects which can be changed so if we write the insertion sort as a procedure in this way our main program will look like this the insertion sort changes the list in place we don't it doesn't create a new list and if we print out the list you'll see that it's altered to sorted order after running the insertion procedure the alternative is to write the insertion sort as a function rather than a procedure so this this is uh this is shown on the screen. You can tell it's a function because it's got the return command. It returns the sorted list to the main program. So it creates a new list. So our main program would look like this. The returned value has to be captured. Here I've captured it as a new list. I could also capture it by overwriting the old list, but I have that choice. So th when the insertion uh, so is a function it makes potentially makes a new list we could in different programming languages send the list by value or by reference or treat the list as a uh, as a global variable uh, just to remind you you should know this already but if we send a list by value we're sending a copy of the list if we send a list by reference it means we're giving the function or procedure access to the original list in the main program and that's the same as well if we make the list into a global variable so you just need to be aware of these different choices and their implications 
There's another way that we can change the insertion sort. That is every sort, insertion sort and all sorts, work by swapping values. In the insertion sort, the values are swapped backwards. In Python, in the program that you've just written, we can do tuple substitution, which is a simple one line swap command. In other languages, we may need to use that three, that three step swap using um, a temporary variable, which we saw earlier. And the final variation that I just want to briefly review is that in common with all sort algorithms, there's quite a lot of repetition in the insertion sort. And we've done it using two for loops, a forward for loop and a backwards for loop. But in other cases, uh, programmers could write the program changing the backwards for loop into a while loop or using recursion. Remember, anything that can be done with iteration can be done with recursion. So let's just briefly look at these variants. And I think it would be nice to practice these programs so you could stop. It, the, the more you do this, the better your programming will get to stop the, the video, pause it and have a go. So this is the one that we've been looking at up until now. This is the insertion sort as a procedure. It's got a forward uh, for loop and inside that a backwards for loop. Instead of that, we could use a while loop. And actually, although it's slightly more complicated to explain, it, it actually makes a shorter program so we pass we pass the value backwards until it reaches a position that um, where it's 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 no longer smaller than the value behind it so the while loop is kind of combining the effect of the backwards for loop and the if command so I do recommend you have a go at that um, it works just as well, and it's actually a slightly shorter program. So have, see, if, see if you can make that change. And finally, we can also do the insertion sort as a recursive function. Uh, the base case is when the marker reaches the end of the list and we have to pass on the list and the marker mm -hmm. as parameters. The marker goes on forward by one each time. So we're, we're, return, we're calling the function over and over again with the marker moving on each time. OK, so in this lesson, we have gone through how to write the insertion sort in Python and the implications of creating it as a function or as a procedure. You've seen an easy way to improve the speed by including a single command break. And we've looked at some variations which are interesting to know about. I strongly recommend you have a go at some of those variations. OK, I'm leaving you with an activity. I've given you a, uh, if you're my student, a big list uh, with a, a well over a thousand items in it. So use the insertion sort to sort that list into alphabetical order. And if you get that done, my ongoing challenge to you is to add a counter that counts how many operations there are uh, to complete the sort and compare the insertion sort with the bubble sort. OK, so in the next, this leads on to the next lesson, because in the final lesson on this sequence about sorting, I'm going to look at ways that we can improve the speed of these simple sort algorithms. OK, so bye for now.